Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, greetings on this 11th day of December as we prepare to um, begin our Sunday school lesson for the day. I, um, I welcome you to St. Mary Amy Church's uh, Sunday school, and uh, we are excited about what God is going to show us today. Um, at this time, as you might notice, or you, maybe you don't notice if you're on Facebook, that, oh, never mind. I was going to say that I am here by myself uh, on Zoom, but I am not here by myself on Zoom because Miss Jackie Jordan has just joined me <laughs> on Zoom. Good morning, Miss Jackie. Jordan. <laughs> Good um, morning. How are you? I'm kind of here. Um Okay. I don't know how I'm going to do the lesson because I don't know how to do you see Zoom and then find the book. You know what uh, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. So, so which device are you on right now? I'm Looking on my phone. Me. And I was You're trying to do, yeah, I was trying to do my uh, Kindle to to do zoom but it wanted me to update and it kept kicking me out because uh -huh. i was going to use okay. both devices yeah yeah, We're yeah. Getting books <laughs> book actually the book the books arrived this week and so we will have books today is the okay. last day at least for this quarter you should have to worry about this great so, <laughs> so i can i can start with the apostle creed and do all of that it's just yep. a lesson that I make. Okay. I can. okay. All right. You do what you can do and we, we will make it work. Okay. Okay. Fine. You just tell me if we're ready. We're ready. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody in my panic. Oh. Now, let's all say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in believe God. God. The Father Almighty, Almighty. maker yes. of heaven yes. and earth, and in Jesus Christ, yes. his only Son, yes. our yes. Lord, who was conceived yes. by the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. born yes. of the Virgin, the Virgin Mary, suffered under the yes. yes. was, crucified, was crucified, crucified, dead and buried. Yes. buried. The third day, yes. he rose from the dead. He ascended into he heaven, ascended into heaven and, and it is my God, Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick quick and the dead. And the dead. I, believe I believe in the Holy, in the Holy Spirit, 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 the Church Universal, the Church Universal communion of the saints, the, saints the, forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body. Resurrection of the body Life everlasting. Life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I can't do the book because I don't have it. I can't do that. But anyway, I'm going to say a, a, a prayer. Oh, Father, thank you for giving us another day to be in your presence. Thank you for Pastor Payne, our uh, leader, spiritual leader. And thank you for Sister Smith, who's such a great. Uh, Sunday school teacher and always bringing us up on the best information that's available when we're questioning uh, what we're reading. And I'm grateful for that. Uh, thank you for our class. Thank you for taking care of the sick and the shut in. Thank you for giving those who mourn peace. And thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's speak the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And Forgive our, trust, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now, Pastor, I need help. Okay, I got. I I, I will. I will help you at this point. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, Jackie is suffering from the not having enough devices to do this, and so I'm going to take over at this point as far as introducing our lesson for the day. Uh, it is December 11th. Um, our lesson is lesson two of this quarter. Zachariah speaks. Our lesson scripture is uh, Luke chapter 1, 57 through 80, and our focus scripture is Luke 1, 57 through 66, and verses 76 through 79. Uh, for those who are able, we will share in our key verse together. You, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. That is Luke chapter 1 verses uh, verse 76 of the new revised standard version and again for those who are able um, we're going to read responsibly um, beginning at Luke chapter 1 verse 57 now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth and she bore a son her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, none of your relatives have this name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John, and all of them were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was open. And open his tongue and free, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, What then is the child, will this child become? become? For in was the hand of the Lord was with him. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sin. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. In verse 79 together. To give, to give light, light to those who sit in darkness. And in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Now hear what Christ our Savior says. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father. Glory, glory be, be to the Father, the Son, and to the Son, and, and, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was, as it was, in, the was in the beginning, is, is now, is now and, ever and ever shall be, shall be world without, without end. end. <clears throat> Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you very much, Sister Jackie. Sister Smith. Good morning. <laughs> uh, Sister Jackie, you didn't get your lesson. I do, but I, I don't know how to go back and forth. Oh, okay. You know, I, I want Okay. I'm trying to show you all what you're um, trying to get out of this way. This is what your Sunday school book looks like. <laughs> mm -hmm. A pastor has announced that they are in, they will be at church today. Good job. 
And we ordered these back in the summer. I don't know what's wrong with our publishing. They moved to a new building. They've had some difficulties getting the shipments out. Mm. So we, I mean, you think if you order some in August, you, you'd have it by November. <laughs> but that wasn't the case. But we got them now. So yeah. we're, we're grateful for that. Okay. So... Our lesson today is Zachariah Speaks. Uh, before we get into it, could I get someone to give the class an opening prayer? Okay. Uh, good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning thanking you for another day. Thanking you for allowing us to be in your presence present and to study your word. I mm -hmm. ask Father that uh, something will be said that will encourage us and enlighten us. I ask that uh, the words that are taught will become a part of our life. Mm -hmm. I ask Father that uh, you will lead us and direct us in the way that you would have us to go. Mm -hmm. And be with the class teacher mm -hmm. as she uh, lead us in the study for today. Mm -hmm. I also ask that uh, the things that will be said will become a part of our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I ask Father that uh, we will receive it and be blessed by it. Mm -hmm. I also ask a blessing upon the pastor who will Amen. come this afternoon and teach your word. Amen. That something will be said that will be encouraged and carry us through the week at least, yes. uh, and to the midweek. <laughs> as we go forward during the midweek to learn more about your word. Mm -hmm. I thank you for everything that you have done and the things that you are going to do. I ask your blessing upon those who are gathered here today to learn more about your word and more about you. Yeah. I ask Father that you bless those who are not able to be here mm -hmm. and that Something will be said that will be encouraging, Father, to those who are not quite where they should be and those who don't understand and those who don't know you and the pardon of their sin. I ask that you bless those who are going through, especially mm -hmm. in this time of the season. I ask that you bless those who uh, have lost loved ones and still feel lost that you would just comfort them. Amen. Come on, come on, Father, I just ask your blessing upon each and every one that has gathered to learn more about you. Yes. These are another blessing I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's my husband. <laughs> hmm. Pastor Payne, you saw how he sneaked Bible study in? He said, y'all get a fill up today. <laughs> and maybe it'll hold you till Wednesday. Come on back and get some more. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. I Because <laughs> he knows it's going to be tomorrow for the brethren. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right. Okay. Uh, our lesson today, uh, Zachariah Speaks. Last week, we ended with a little fuzz about. Um, who John was, and I did send the class some little additional information to read. I hope you all got it. It was simply a scripture in John 1, 19 through 24, that said in verse 21, when the people came to ask John who he was, you know, they asked him, are you the Christ? He said, I am not. And they say, what then? Are you Elijah? John say, I am not. <laughs> and, and they want to know, are you a prophet? Just who are you? But I think the, the point where we stopped last week uh, was thinking that uh, John really was Elijah because we were taught that he was in the spirit of Elijah. You know, there were so many similarities to him. So by his own words, he says, I am not Elijah. <laughs> we know Elijah did not die. 
So there was no need for him to be born again of a woman on earth, which was Elizabeth. So just wanted to mention that. I don't know if anybody else found other info they want to share on that topic before we move into today's lesson. Okay. If not, we're going to move on. Okay. As a background, last week we learned about how God had blessed Elizabeth and her husband, Zachariah, who was a priest. They were a childless couple and they were old. Mm -hmm. It seemed hopeless that they would have a child because they were old and past the uh, childbearing age. Mm -hmm. But as we read and we were able to say, look at God, you know, he heard their prayers, he knew their desires and he blessed the couple yeah. to have a child. He sent the angel Gabriel uh, to relay that message to Zachariah and he didn't believe him, you know? So since he didn't believe as Gabriel said, I stand in front of the living God, you know, and, and you have not received the message that he has sent, you know, so you're going to remain mute until the child gets here. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is why we open up today's lesson from last week, Zechariah heard from God, God has answered his prayers. And now today he has, he's going to get unmuted. <laughs> he speaks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we see uh, the birth of John the Baptist in Luke 1, 57 through 58. I need someone just to read that. It's on the screen. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth. And she mm. bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord has shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoice with her. All right. Okay, now our Sunday school lesson did a decent job of explaining uh, the times. It says that during this time, Elizabeth was surrounded by family and friends. That was their custom when a woman gave birth. And one of the reasons for that, the archaeologists tell us that the infant mortality rate was like 50% in some parts of ancient Israel. Mm -hmm. So they had midwives that aided the mothers during childbirth. And it is believed that they cut the umbilical cord, they washed, rubbed salt on, and clothed the baby. But this is the part that I was surprised to see that after the birth, these women would remain with the newborn and family for seven days. Wow. <laughs> they weren't playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were not playing. So it just begs the question, uh, what was the reaction of the neighbors and relatives at the news of the birth? And why do you think they had that type of reaction? Anybody? What was the reaction of the neighbors and relatives? Well, for one thing, they were in shock because no one in her family. Uh, oh, don't you? That's that's a little bit later. We just gonna deal with fifty-seven and fifty-eight. At the list. Okay, they who said rejoiced. that? They rejoiced with her. They were happy for her. They they rejoiced. That's that's true. They, they were happy with her. And, and why do y'all, I mean, before we get into the why, we know that there was a stigma on a woman uh, who couldn't have a child, right. especially a son <laughs> during that time. So uh, so they, they rejoiced with her. They were happy with her. And there's an underlying reason as to why they rejoiced. Because she, of her age. Okay. She was and past that, childbearing years. Okay. And that, that is a great point. And what did we say that the archaeologists told us? That, that there was 50% of the kids died. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> so they rejoice somebody this age can have a child, the wow. child lives, and they rejoice. Mm-hmm. But there was uh, in scripture there that was just read, uh, Sister Jackie just read. They also rejoiced because God had shown great mercy to Elizabeth mm. by taking away her barrenness and building her family. That's, that's great mercy. And we see that in everything that you all said. You know, nobody expected that. You're old. You don't deserve a child. You're too old. But God mm-hmm. said, no, <laughs> you're not too old, mm-hmm. you know, for my plan. So um, great mercy. That's what a uh, verse, um, the ending of that verse said, her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her and they rejoiced with her. Mm. And mercy is, Jack, Sister Jackie, I know you got it ready. <laughs> Not getting what you deserve. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I do want all class to participate on this next question. What should we learn from the neighbors and relatives' reaction? We we say all the time we we don't want to go back to pre-Jesus and not know what that meant, what that means for us today. What is the lesson? that we should learn from the neighbors and relatives' reactions. That we should rejoice when God blesses those around us. We should be happy when we, when they're blessed. Oh, okay. It was that Sonia? Mm-hmm. Good answer. Anybody else? That God can do whatever he wants to do. He's... Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's what we learned. Okay. Uh, what we, somebody else was about to say something? No, I was just going to pick it back on what Brother uh, Smith said that uh, how God, when you, God continue to bless you with a blessing, when you thinking that, you know, you can't even have a child and you pass, you know, childbearing age so it's just you know trusting in God and not giving up on uh, what he said that he will do for you okay all right very good anybody else part of our character should be to uh, uh, be happy when others get blessed no matter Mm -hmm. what it is whether it's a promotion where uh, you don't uh, think that uh, mm-hmm. that person deserves it because all promotion belongs to God. It's, yeah. uh, it's uh, they get a new vehicle. Why they get a new vehicle? I need one. They don't. They're not doing yes. anything with it. They just going. They're just going to run here and there and run it in the ground. They get blessed with a new home. You know, they get blessed with new. Uh, uh, they just get blessed with things. You should. We yeah. should be happy. Um, right. We should. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, celebrate with them because mm. your attitude determines your altitude and God wants us to mount up on wings of eagles, not fly low like the turkey buzzard. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, in your comments, when you mentioned about, uh, we should be happy. Um, and, and the Bible does deal with that. When, when a person is honored, you know, we should feel honored too, because we're in this together. And I like what you said about promotion. And uh, oftentimes we lose sight of that. You know, I train them and they got the job. Mm-hmm. And for the way just reminded us, promotion comes from God. So what you upset about? <laughs> he used you to accomplish that. <laughs> yeah. So and like Sister Sonia said, just, you know, just rejoice. And we, yeah. as, you know, church um, as Christians and church going people we should just you know rejoice yeah with our sisters and our brother you know really just to lift them up during mm-hmm. a time like this you know make a joyful noise into the lord okay Sarah, so, yeah, and i agree with you all we ought to take pleasure and rejoice when our neighbors and family members prosper and be thankful to god for their blessings as if they were your own. Now, 
you know, the simple answer to my uh, why? Because the Bible tells us so. There you go. On the screen, mm. Romans 12 and 15 say, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We are a body. We are in this together. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we should rejoice when they rejoice. And don't forget them when they're weeping either. <laughs> and, you know, um, the Bible that I looked that scripture up in kind of outlined all its topics. And this was under what they call Christian behavior. <laughs> this is how Christians ought to act. We ought to rejoice, not be jealous or envious or resentful, mm -hmm. you know, because the same God that gave it to them can do it to you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just keep trusting and believing. So that's what those two verses were talking about, that Elizabeth, after those nine months, gave birth to that son and the neighbors came and rejoiced with them because God had shown her such mercy. Yes. And then we move on to the circumcision of John the Baptist. Luke uh, 1, 59 and 66. Somebody get ready, get ready, get ready to read. Come on, Miss Sonia. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and they were going to name him Zachariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. They <laughs> said to her, none of your relatives have this name. Mm. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John, and all of them were amazed. Okay, and then 64... Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. Mm -hmm. All who heard them pondered them and said, what then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Let's just look at the, the gall of some people. <laughs> So on the eighth day, <clears throat> what was going to happen? They came to circumcise him. Anybody know what that, uh, just a little simple term for circumcise? Removal of the foreskin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that, that was a ceremony mm -hmm. uh, for males. Now, do, does anyone know where it originated from? It was a covenant with, uh, I think it was, was it with Moses? Did it start with Moses? Oh, Go back a little oh, bit further. All right. Abraham. Yes. 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 Between Abraham right. and God and yes. Abraham did it quickly along with him and his household. Yes. 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 It was, um, it was a solemn time when every Jewish child received the sign of the Abrahamic covenant. Yes. So that was that was a very special time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the Bible goes on to tell us in Genesis 17, 9 through 14, it ends with verse 14 saying, and the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So this was a sign of a covenant that God made with Abraham. Right. It brought certain privileges uh, to the, the male in that he was accepted by the community. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. but there is something um, that Paul taught right. over in the New Testament regarding circumcision. We know that circumcision during this time was a physical sign of wow. God's covenant with Abraham. Mm -hmm. Spiritual circumcision. 
Yeah. Oh, that's what Paul taught. <laughs> what in the world is that? <laughs> Brother Wade, I heard you say spiritual uh, circumcision. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, see how I can explain it, how I'm thinking. It. Spiritual cir cir uh, circumcision is, is to cut away uh, the things that, that uh, would uh, be uh, not good. Uh, 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 that would keep you from God, all the uh, 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 the things that are holding you back from uh, uh, from doing God's word, from uh, yeah. following his commandments and his will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, let's see. Before we get to that part, I need somebody to read what's on the screen right now. Brother Wade, to write on point. I need someone to read this. Paul teaches in Romans 2, 25 through 29, that a circumcised body and a sinful heart are at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. Rather than focus on external rights, he focuses on the condition of the heart, uh -huh. using circumcision as a metaphor. He says that only the Holy Spirit can purify a heart and set us apart to God. Ultimately, circumcision cannot make a person right with God. The law is not enough. A person's heart must change. Paul right. calls this change circumcision of the heart. All right. So I wanted to bring that in so that we wouldn't get, there are people might be fearful today. Oh, my mama didn't get me circumcised. I'm not in the covenant with Abraham. Uh, and Paul wants us to know what's important because people could be circumcised and live, and live evil lives. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the physical act doesn't, doesn't save you. You know, that's an external right. And uh, Paul say we need to uh, circumcise the heart, get our hearts right so that we can serve the Lord. Now, I said, Paul said this about the circumcision of the heart, but this, I want somebody to read this next screen. Vicki? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This concept was not original with the Apostle Paul. The Lord used the same metaphor to communicate his uh, desire for a, uh, for a holy people. And the Lord, your God, will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring so that you will love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live, Deut Deuteronomy 30 and 6. Circumcise yourself to the Lord, circumcise your heart, you men of Judah and people of Jerusalem of my wrath will break out and burn like fire because of the evil you have done, Jeremiah 4 and 4. Okay, so yes, God set up a physical and external uh, ritual um, that was a sign that, that you're going to be blessed by the Abrahamic covenant. But God said, you need to circumcise your heart also. In the Old Testament, it wasn't a new theory that Apostle Paul came up with. Mm -hmm. In Deuteronomy 30 and 6, he said, circumcise your heart and the hearts of your offsprings. Mm -hmm. And why? So that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Mm -hmm. So... We need to keep that concept of uh, circumcise our heart. This is this is a heart matter. Both testaments, the old and the new, focus on the need for repentance and inward change, inward change, in order to be right with God. We got to get some inward change. Okay, mm -hmm. everybody got that? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we already said on the eighth day, following the commandment given by Moses, the Brit Miller circumcising and naming took place. And you can find a reference to that in uh, Leviticus 12 and 3. And as we read earlier, the crowd of people present at John's circumcision ceremony would include the women who assisted with the birth, other relatives, and friends. This is a real ceremony right here. 
-hmm. We know that traditionally a baby boy would be named after his father or someone else in the family. So the relatives and neighbors were shocked when Elizabeth insisted on the name John. And Zachariah wrote on a tablet, and of course that settled it, mm -hmm. you know, at, at the, part of that uh, circumcising ceremony was naming the child. Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking at when we first read and they came mm -hmm. to circumcise the child and they came to name the child, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and, and they meant to, to do it by tradition. Yeah. But Elizabeth said no. And then, um, Zacharias confirmed that his name is John. Right. And, and the name John means God is gracious. That's a, that's a fitting name for this child because he would introduce the gospel of Jesus Christ, wherein God's grace shines more brightly than ever. Mm. So the uh, question that came to my man. Why do you think the naming controversy, what do you think the naming controversy says about God and tradition? These people walked in there on the eighth day as the custom was, mm -hmm. and they want to circumcise and name the child. Right. So what do you think? The name and how, how, well, how does that deal with God and tradition? What does it say about yes. that? It's, it's that it's I'm sorry, ladies. go ahead. You can go. No, 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 ladies first. I was just, <laughs> thinking that just because, yeah, like you were saying, just because it's tradition doesn't make it as important as what God says. He's, we have, we can put things before God and tradition shouldn't be one of them just because you've always done it this way mm. doesn't that God wanted that way right things matters okay very good brother Wade I know you got the second of the two things I'm sure she covered one of them <laughs> well I have two things oh, okay <laughs> Uh, that uh, uh, and I'm going to piggyback off of, uh, what Sister Jackie said, but uh, I'm just going to uh, build it up a little higher, and oh. then somebody's going to come behind me and build it up a little bit higher. Hey, but, son, you uh, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> I know Brother Smith's in there too, so Brother oh, yeah. Smith's going to build it up higher too. I see her face right now. <laughs> uh, and, well, uh, and. and God can do anything that he wants to. Mm -hmm. and, and God's way is the only right way. Tradition mm -hmm. is just that tradition that man has set. But yes. what God uh, wants to do is always going to be, in one word, perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so when we start, uh, and, and that and that's where, and that's where, you know, some of the Jews got their self uh, in, in issues because they were going off tradition, tradition, and not what thus saith the Lord. Right. So when, once you start going off of uh, tradition and, and tradition pits or goes against what thus saith the Lord, you, mm -hmm. you're, you're in wrong territory. Mm -hmm. um, right. mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to say as far as when we go back to the Abrahamic covet with, uh, uh, with Abraham and we we're talking about circumcision, mm -hmm. uh, we have to realize that uh, this is a uh, this is a, a tough thing and not not to mention painful thing. <laughs> and we have to realize that. And, and, and when I go back and I say this, you know, and, and, and when I go back and I say this is because Abraham had to come out and say, hey, men, this is what you should do. This is what you need to do. Right. And, and how do you, you know, how do you come? That was a big task because this is what I got from God. So I'm telling you to do this. And mm -hmm. on top of that, I'm going to be the first one to do it. Right, right. And when, people, and when men would see what uh and this all takes faith this is a faith walk to see what right. this entailed and then people holding you and then all of a sudden snip snip or slice slice you know <laughs> how do you convince people that's nothing but but god and having that faith to say hey you know what through your walk brother and through your work and i believe what you said god told you to say i want to use my faith 
And this has never happened before, but anytime you get a cut, think about a paper cut that may <laughs> hurt, but we're talking about something more sensitive. Now that's that 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 was a huge ask, as we said. That was a huge task, but we know the task wasn't big, bigger than God. Right. And I know you as a man probably have a better version of how painful it might have been <laughs> than we women would have. Although there are some, I call them pagan the countries that do uh, uh, circumcise women. Uh, uh, I, I can't yeah. even imagine that, that one right there. Mm-hmm. So, yes, 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 yes. Okay, very good. Now, I, I just wanted to sum this up. Let's see here. I agree with what you all Sister Smith? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Miss Sonia. You told me to get ready. Okay. I so, did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. You are so right. Sister Smith, I just have a couple things. Okay. Um. And may or may not even be related because this is me. Okay. Uh, Old Testament, you know, every time they went through something and God brought them to a place, they would build an altar. Yeah. The altar was named representative of the circumstance of the situation that God had brought them out of. Right. Uh, and I I see the naming and, and we, we hear about that. We know about the importance of the naming of a child you know, um, the characteristics or the circumstances, they would name them based on all of that. Uh, So that was one thing I saw. This was, uh, you know, God had brought them out of this struggle of not being able to bear a child, not being able to to do these things. And now it has happened. Mm -hmm. And the name of the child, God is gracious. Every time they speak this name now, it is going to be a reminder of how God brought them out. It's going to be a representation of how God had brought them out. So that's the first thing. The second thing was that God God honors tradition. He honors tradition, but obedience to God supersedes tradition every time. That's right. That's right. That is it. Oh, have you become a Mrs. Two thing? All right, (laughs) Sonia. (laughs) I love it. Yes. Okay, who else? And I, I, before I move on, does anybody? I didn't mean to omit Vicky or Thomas. Come on. What do you think the name and controversy? What the people thought, and what Elizabeth and a uh, Zachariah said. <laughs> well, in the naming, I, I don't know. Uh, like Elizabeth, I don't know if. Well, I guess God spoke to it, but it doesn't say. It. That's all I'm saying. Question mark there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was it? Is there anywhere that said that God told her? No. Uh-huh. Me, but 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 once uh, Zachariah was unmuted, he mm-hmm. confirmed. So evidently, the two was in in it cost. I think the angels came in and talked to Zachariah at one time and told him. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. like it was unbelief. So he was muted. Mm-hmm. But when the child came forward, mm-hmm. Elizabeth just said, Well, the name was, and that, you know, everybody fell back. Hold up, wait a minute. What is this? That's that's not uh family tradition, I guess, you know. And that's what yeah. they're saying. So I'm yeah, oh, I, yes. it, it isn't written how Elizabeth knew. We know that Zachariah was performing his priestly duties. We talked about last year, and that angel appeared, you know, and we talked about people getting frightened throughout the Bible, and the angel always say, Fear not. We don't know. We don't know if Zechariah wrote it on the tablet early and told uh, Elizabeth. We, the, it does not say. Uh-huh. But she knew. <laughs> okay. She knew. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Brother Smith. Anyone else? Okay. Sonia, I'm going to get you to just read this little bit on the screen. What do you think the name and controversy says about God and tradition? God is never bound by human tradition. We may accept that certain forms, practices, procedures, and rituals are appropriate in our family or church. 
But God will sometimes upset them all when he knows we must be weaned from their spiritually numbing influence. When we insist on living within our traditions, we will often miss God's blessings and become mm -hmm. spiritually irrelevant to our society. Amen. I love that statement. God is not bound by human tradition. I mean, he showed that uh, when the eldest son didn't get the birthright. Mm -hmm. Esau didn't get it. Jacob got it. <laughs> so, and, and that's all throughout scripture. You know, God, and I think Brother Smith said earlier, God is sovereign. Yeah. You know, he can do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he has to upset that tradition. You know, we got, what did it say? We must be weaned just mm -hmm. like a baby weaned from their spiritual numbing influence, those policies, those rituals. Mm -hmm. At St. Mary, we used to take communion with that little white cloth on our heads. Yeah. And one, I, in, a, in a workshop, quarterly conference, Sunday school or something, my big mouth, say, mm -hmm. why do we do that? Mm -hmm. What is the reason that we put that white cloth on our heads? I don't know. Nobody knew. It was tradition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that was before uh, people start saying, we're not going to put stuff on our heads because people can transmit certain scalp diseases, lice or something from other people. We're not going to do that no more. You know, and some churches stopped doing it because of uh, health reasons. Um, this was long before COVID. But when the question was asked, why do we do that? And nobody could answer it. Mm -hmm. So we just stopped doing it <laughs> until maybe we could come up with an answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sister yes, sir. Uh, uh, some things uh, uh, are born so back in tradition, such as um, uh, let's go back to the slave days to Ooh. where uh the slaves uh you had so you had a uh, uh you had a uh, uh slave that couldn't read however what he could do he could uh he could remember what he heard and then they would meet down in the bottom and away from you know away from the uh uh the the slave masters and 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 there as someone say he could regurgitate or or re uh, uh reenact in, in their vernacular what they heard because right. of course, uh, during that time, it was illegal, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, uh, for slaves to uh, know how to uh, to read or to write. So mm -hmm. they would reenact what they did here, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 you know, and, and during that time, that's where you got a uh, uh, hooping, you know, uh, as far as for some of the preaching styles uh, as well, you know. So uh, those are things that they heard and then put their own flavor to it, as we normally do. You know, uh, uh, we have a, a thing of putting our own flavor to things in order to get people interested or keep them interested, you know, but whatever you need to do that is correct uh, uh, to bring people to the word of God, because the word is either going to drive you or draw you. And we mm -hmm. want to draw people. And then uh, with the word, then the, the, the spirit, uh, the spirit of God will keep you there. You know, and it, it will uh, once again, we'll have another soul that we can add to the rosters for God. Right. Right. And so I, I definitely agree that that God is not bound by human tradition. They were weren't they selling in the temple and had certain yes. practices and God came in there and, and ran them out. That's right. That is my house is a house of prayer, you know, not for selling and buying, you know, but it was tradition to do that. Mm -hmm. It was tradition to name a child uh, after his father or relative, but God said his name was going to be what he meant. God is gracious. That's the that's what John mean. He the people needed to know that. Somebody said earlier when um when you repeat that name, you're saying God is gracious, and we're going to see how gracious God was in this prophecy that John is about to tell us in the next set of scriptures. Mm -hmm. um, I remember John Cherry saying his dad was a presiding elder. They wanted him to be a preacher. They named him John mm -hmm. <laughs> because they expected him to be a preacher. Mm 
you know, but sometimes God don't follow human tradition. He upset mm-hmm. the apple cart. <laughs> yeah. See what it says is spiritually numb in you. You in the mm-hmm. same old pattern. You know, nobody's being blessed by it. Let me shake it up. Mm-hmm. You know, and Pastor Payne, I know you attest to it. We change the order of service sometimes because <laughs> we want to bring the spirit of the Lord in to be manifested. And sometimes when we go through rote memory and the same thing over and over, yeah. but I know what Sonia said, some tradition is good. Mm-hmm. So we do need order. But sometimes God is shake it up because <laughs> we live in within the tradition. Yes. Okay. So when Zachariah's speech returned, his first words were Baraha. A barakha, pronounced either way. And that means a blessing and praise that recognize complete dependence on God. Mm. On the nine months of silence, mm. Zechariah had time to think about the fact that without God, even the ability to speak becomes impossible. Mm-hmm. So after all these incidents, the people wonder what kind of person John would become. They knew something spectacular had occurred, but they didn't fully understand. Mm -hmm. And when we move on to the next set of scriptures, um, Zachariah is going to speak some stuff that will bless them and help them answer their wondering minds, their Mm -hmm. thoughts. Now, the thing about this Zechariah's prophecy, verses 67 through 75 are not part of our printed text. But in those verses, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, Zechariah began what is known as Zechariah's Benedictus, which is a song of praise to God and prophecy concerning his son, John. Now, our lesson said, after blessing El Elyon, which means the most high God, Zechariah then prophesies and gives praise to God for what will be. Mm. Now, (laughs) being me, I had to at least print 67 through 75. Our lesson didn't include it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brother Wade, could you read it for us if you can see that? Yes, ma'am. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our uh, all the days of our life. And okay. that was verses 67 through 75. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I'll listen, but it's some key words in there. That's why I put it up. You know, um uh, he said, Blessed is the Lord of Israel. He has redeemed. Now we're talking about he's prophesizing about the coming of Jesus Christ now. Yeah. And and those things that are about to happen. Mm -hmm. So he said he has redeemed his people. What does it mean to redeem? To buy back. back. Yeah, it means to set free by paying a price. Mm -hmm. You know, so that Jesus did that. (laughs) And, And it says that, and he has raised up a horn of salvation. That horn of salvation symbolizes power and victory. We see all of this. This is the Jesus coming. He came, there's a prophecy fulfilled. He comes from the house of David. You know, as he 
spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began. He said that we should be saved from our enemies and all those who hate us mm. to perform the mercy. There you go. God is a promise keeper. Mm. You know, he's going to perform what he said. Yeah. To remember his holy covenant that he swore to our father Abraham. Mm -hmm. And also you see deliverance in that passage. Yes. You say, this is what Jesus Christ is coming to do. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't want to omit it. I know we, probably, ooh, we didn't have a lot of time, but we better go on and read verses 676 through 80, Jackie, please. And just, you, child will be called the prophet of the most high. Mm -hmm. We will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, mm -hmm. to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. Yes. Tender mercies of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child mm -hmm. grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. Yeah, you know, that's part of his prophecy, saying you, child, yeah. <laughs> will be called the prophet of the Most High, mm -hmm. and you're going to go and prepare a way uh, for, for who's to come. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the 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 questions asked by the people are answered in, in, in his words. John will be a prophet, preparing the way for the Lord, the Messiah, to give knowledge of salvation to his people for the forgiveness of sin. John, you going to be the forerunner. If we had to put a, a key word to all that scripture that Brother Wade through Sister Jackie read, we saw redemption in verse 68. We saw salvation in 69 through 75. Remission. Jesus came for the remission to take away sin, 76 through 77. And the dawning of a new day. When Jesus come, people were sitting in darkness. But you know, when the light come, darkness has to flee. Amen. Amen. So, I wanted to end this lesson. I'm sure it's plenty more, but every time I look over there at that clock and see I've taken more time than I should have, I'm just going to end it with Jesus is the gift. And I hope we take this thought throughout this season. Yes. You know, my children have already, you know, they do me like I used to do them. Give me three things you might want and you'll get one of them as you give. I'm not going to tell you what, so you'll still be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think I'll kind of little knickknacks because I really, really don't want anything, but they, they just make us take something. Mm -hmm. But this is a sentiment in my heart that Jesus is the gift. We already got the gift. Mm -hmm. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. I am so sorry. We are past time and we are ready for our youth. If it, well, Let me just say, is it anything burning on somebody's heart? They just wanted to get in as they were studying before uh, the youth come. We got a minute. Anybody? I'll even take two things. I got to miss the business two things now. <laughs> I was going to say, Jesus is the reason for all seasons. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And we got to remember that. Yes. Okay. I made it short and sweet, Sister Smith. Yes, sir. I love it. What say you, Sonia? I know you got some. Is she on mute? She may be out. Oh, oh there she is. Huh? What did she say? No, I don't have anything. I'm fine. Okay, thanks. Uh, Sister Jackie? To remember that it's Jesus' birthday and not ours to celebrate <laughs> him. All right. Thomas Smith? <laughs> Mara? And I don't know if anybody's online past the bit. Okay. 
Thank you all for your attention. I'm sorry we rushed at the end. Um, we're now ready to hear the youth. Sister Trinity, are you there? I know we're they were blessed with Trinity teaching the youth class. Yes, ma'am, I'm here. And they were blessed by the word of God. There was nothing that I did. All right. Um, but our lesson today was Zachariah Speaks. And we also talked about the importance of names. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to allow them to come in their own way and share what they've learned from the lesson today. So just whoever wants to go. Okay. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We learned how, we learned today how obeying and trusting God is, 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 is really worth it. Oh. How it is worth it and how uh good things can come from doing what he says it shows that good things can come out of doing what he says mm -hmm. and even though you might have a, a a set in your mind what might be good for you you should always listen to god first and see what he has in store amen Pastor, he about to make old Sunday school teacher shout. He said, obeying and trusting God is wonderful. All right. I received that. Amen. <laughs> hey, anybody else from the U? I think that might be it. I think that might be it. Well, that was good. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for teaching that class. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Good. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trinity, um, for stepping in. And also, uh, thank you, uh, Decorius, for your feedback. I yeah. was particularly blessed by that, uh, for sure. No. Um, and to everybody else, um, uh, let me see. Let me go ahead and say what I say. This is now. This is a, This is please, please, please. This is no slight to the females in the audience. This is uh -oh. not. But I need <laughs> I need you brothers to understand the importance of when a man speaks, mm -hmm. because two things that we see from Zechariah by speaking, even when he was mute, his opinion still mattered. Yeah. So many of us as men think our opinion does not matter. Wow. And the other part that we see in this lesson is he spoke over his son. Mm -hmm. He spoke words of blessing over his son, over the people that God had given him. Yeah. We as men need to speak life into the, the people that God has given us. Remember, Thank Adam's you. job was to name things. Adam's job was to call them what they were. When yeah. Adam is silent, things go wrong. And Zechariah spoke up and, and people were blessed because he was, all right? Again, this is not diminished the role of women because uh, Proverbs 31, that is what his mother taught him. And so please understand that. But men, we have got to speak up, okay? So that our families will know, the people around us will know that they belong that they fit, that they matter. When we don't speak, things die. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and so that's that's what I get from this lesson. And if the only thing, and, and this is where I want to help mothers out, the women out, stop making the husband be the bad guy all the time. Mm. I told y'all about this when, when Ayana got her shots. Linda made me hold Ayana. And then when the shots were over and Ayanna was crying, Linda wanted to come in and rescue. And so the image was, I was the guy who hurt her and she was the one who helped her. No. We as men have to speak more than discipline. We have to speak love. We have to speak hope. We have to speak power. We have to speak peace. If we don't, we, well, just turn on your news. Nah, nah. 
Man. Okay. And so Zachariah spoke, and because Zachariah spoke, Tom, Dick, Harry, Wade, Thomas, all of us need to speak as well. All right? That's Man. all I got today. Well, that was good, Pastor. I'm not a man, but that was so good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, actually, before we before we do the Apostles' Creed, let me say this. Um, Sister Smith, I, I do want to once again commend you for the work that you do. And this week was a perfect evidence of it by going back and sending out that email. But I was having lunch with a church member earlier this week. And that church member told me that when they grew up, um, they didn't like Sunday school. But watching you teach Sunday school has brought out a love for Sunday school for them. And so I wanted to publicly say that. I know you go, oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Because again, you could have said no. Or you could just do just enough. But what you have done and what you are doing matters to people's lives and you are making an impact. And so I, as the pastor of St. Mary, I want to specifically thank you for what you were doing. And it is not going unseen and unnoticed, but you are impacting people's lives. So thank you very much for that. Praise God. Praise God. All Thank right. You. Now let us let us share together in the church school creed. I believe yes. my AME church, church school must grow, must and, grow and grow. And that I make it so. Make it so. Every member, every member a Christian. Every Christian, every Christian a worker, every, every worker trained, so that, so that a worker needs not to be ashamed. Yes, yes. yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you again, Trinity. Thank you, young people. Thank you, everybody. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in worship in about uh, 37 minutes. God bless. Thank yeah. you for the opportunity. Amen. That's great. Pastor, when did you say since the pain?